Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about bedroom design mistakes. These are the problems that I see that people do in their bedroom, to which there are many, so buckle in. I actually did living room and kitchen and bathroom design mistakes, and I did a whole series on it, and then I kind of forgot and didn't do it again. So I'm gonna to link to those at the end of this video. And also, you know, usual interior design YouTube disclaimer, which is that if you love these things, then put them in your home, that's fine. That's obvious, like it's your home, do what you want. If you love having 300 pillows on your bed, you know, I love that for you, good for you but I will make fun of it because I love that for me too. So we're just gonna have a little bit of fun and not take all this too super seriously, okay? Also, my interior design course, by the way, comes out in a couple of weeks. There is a discount that is on now for just a little bit longer until it goes live. Link is down in the description. Shameless plug, let's get going. Okay, first bedroom design mistake that I see is the bed is too big. This is a challenge, especially if you live in an apartment like I do or a smaller home and you have a smaller primary bedroom. It can be really, really tricky, but I do think that getting the right size bed for the room is not only going to make all the functional difference in the world, but it's also aesthetically going to be a lot better because a room that is is too small for the bed that you have is gonna look funny. It's always gonna look off. The scale is off in the rest of the room and you need to get a bed that fits the size of the room that you have. A good rule is having at least 18 inches around all different sides of the bed to make sure that you have adequate clearance to be able to get out of the bed comfortably and it'll look really great and much better that way. I think if you have less than that, it becomes a lot trickier. Then next up is uh, similar in the same way of things being kind of too large or too small is going to be having the wrong size headboard. So I. I am seeing this trend of a lot of these super crazy tall headboards, usually tufted, sometimes sequined, uh, which is fine, you know, personal preference, especially in like a glam style and they are super, 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 super tall. And the problem with that is going to be that it is, quite frankly, the scale is just off again. You've, you've got a headboard that is just too tall for the size of the ceilings that you have. Now, ceilings are going up. In the last 10, 15 years, ceilings are getting taller in new builds. So before, you know, you might've seen like eight or nine foot ceilings or whatever. Now you're seeing them be a little bit taller, which is great. And that makes it easier easier for people to have these larger headboards. But if you have an older place that probably has lower ceilings or it's in a basement or an apartment or something and you have lower ceilings, be very careful that when you see these super tall headboards on social media and you're like, oof, that's gorgeous, I need that. Just remember that could be in a new build. That could be in a space that has much taller ceilings, in which case it doesn't look, it looks more in proportion there. It does not look the same in your space. So be very mindful of having these super tall headboards especially if you have shorter or lower ceilings. In the same vein, having a headboard that is super stubby is also not great because functionally, what is a headboard for? It is a board to put put your head, like to relax against, right? To prop a pillow up and to actually read in bed or do whatever. Having these super short stubby headboards is horribly uncomfortable because your neck and your back of your head, whatever, is gonna be sitting on the back of these boards and that's no fun for anybody. So I would say get a normal, adequately sized headboard that is going to make sense for your space. If you're lucky enough to have those super tall ceilings, then you know, feel free to go a little bit taller on your headboard. But if you don't, I would really hesitate with that and I would go for just one that is not too short and stubby, but is also not one of these mammoth ones that goes right to the ceiling. No one needs that. Okay, next bedroom design mistake that I see is no texture, not having enough texture. This just is very much kind of feels like a teenage boy's room when there is at, like at no texture. So here's where everybody agrees some sort of texture makes sense, which is the sheets or the duvet or the comforter, which I'm gonna get to comforters in a second. You know, fine, like that's, that's a good starting point. That is not really enough texture in your bedroom for it to feel really cozy and comfortable. So when you've got, you know, plastic shades and you've got just maybe that basic comforter and then you have no rug and you have no other pieces of furniture in the space. Everything just feels really flat, especially when you've got dressers and nightstands, which oftentimes are maybe gonna be in a mirrored finish or they're maybe gonna be in some sort of a lacquer because you just picked it up in Ikea or whatever, which is fine, but you're gonna wanna introduce more texture. Some ideas there are going to be putting, obviously the comfort duvet that we talked about that everybody has, that's fine. Going with some beautiful drapes, going maybe perhaps for a rug underneath so it's nice and cozy on the floor. So you've got a nice base to sort of work from. Pillows, but not too many. We're gonna get to that. Also, maybe things like a bench at the end of the bed if you have adequate space for it. Things like other additional seating might make sense, right? Could be something like a beautiful uh, fabric lighting fixture that you may have in the center of the room, right? So really finding those other additional ways besides that basic comforter to sort of add more texture into the space. It's gonna make it more visually interesting. It's gonna help with the acoustics. Also just gonna feel more cozy and it's gonna feel more comfortable 
but it's not going to read as really flat and boring like if you had no texture in the space. So definitely texture is your friend, especially in the bedroom. Okay, next up is going to be the boring bedroom set. Oh yes. This is just kind of a little Ashley furniture. This is very, the brick if you're from Canada, because you know what I'm talking about, right? There's all sorts of ones that are out there. And this is where retailers have somehow convinced people that they should buy all of the same set. Now having like one or two pieces that make sense may make sense, but honestly having the nightstands match if you're going for a symmetrical look for your bedroom, which usually makes sense for a lot of people, those can be the same. They don't have to be, but they could be the same. But then other pieces really should just look like they speak the same language, they belong together, but they're not so matchy-matchy that they're the exact same from the same bedroom set. So we're talking the giant sleigh bed, the matching nightstands, the matching dresser, the matching bench, the matching, you name it, everything is the same. It all matches. It just feels a little dated. It's a little something that people maybe used to do in kind of the 80s and 90s, and it just feels a little old fashioned for most people. So find ways that you can find maybe matching your wood tones a little bit, matching your color scheme, uh, matching in style, but not necessarily have them exactly the same pieces. You don't just have to go in, despite what the woman at Ashley Furniture told you, you don't necessarily need to get all like six pieces, all like the exact same. I know it feels really simple and it feels easy and it feels cohesive because that's built in because they're the same, but it's so matchy-matchy that it just looks like a showroom and not a nice showroom, if you know what I mean. Sorry. Okay, next up is going to be too many pillows. Yeah, we're talking about it. So what happens to people when they get married that they just feel like they need 7,000 pillows on their bed? Here's the pillows that you need. You probably need a couple of queen or king size pillow, depending on the size of your bed. You might need like a lumbar pillow. You might have some sort of a decorative pillow. Sure, yeah, that can be great. That can tie the whole thing together, I get that. But once you start getting into like 40 pillows and you've got like the knot pillow and then you've got another little lumbar pillow and you've got the like Euro pillows in the back and then before you know it, half the bed is pillows, you've got a problem. That's where you need to take some away. Just really, just rethink some of those pillows and go, do I need this many? Because you know what those, when you get into bed, guess what? They all end up on the floor. That's not great. And then every day you gotta put them all back again. It's ridiculous. You need a few pillows, totally, absolutely. Once you start getting crazy, I would start to think like, what can I remove while still feeling like this reflects my personal style and is still gonna be gorgeous and beautiful and meet my functional needs while I'm in the bed. So maybe you got like a couple of pillows there so you can prop yourself up at night and you can also lie down comfortably and all the rest, that's all fine. But once you start getting into a lot of other ones, time to rethink. And I'm gonna also say, if you've got some creepy dolls on the bed, no. Nope, 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 nope. Those are, you wanna know why you're still single? Ma'am, it's because you've got creepy dolls on your bed because someone came home and they were like, what? And they ran the other way and I don't blame them. And if you've got creepy dolls anywhere in the room, I would just rethink it. And listen, I love when people express their personal style and like put that in their room. And absolutely, that's something that we're all about. Go for it. But if it's creepy dolls and that's your style, I would rethink it. That's, this is my red line because it's just creepy and it's weird and it's freaking us all out. And so it's your bed, do what you want. Just don't be surprised that when someone else sees your bed, they're gonna run the other way, is all I'm saying. Okay, next up is going to be bed in a bag. <laughs> this reminds me of me being a teenager because I feel like a teen in the 90s, everybody had a bed in a bag, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's all the things that you could ever need all coming in one bag. I don't know, I just don't think that home decor should really just always just come in a bag. I feel like it's nice when things are a little bit more curated and a little bit more put together, and I believe in you, you can do that. You don't need to buy everything in a bag. I would say, that there are some advantages to bed in a bag and I super get it. It is simple, it is coordinated by default because it's all in a bag and it's cheap. They're generally quite cheap. The cheap part is obvious because that's like the look and the feel, right? If it feels like your comforter or your 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 insert is made of cotton balls and you know, you like it's polyester filled and you just like kind of grab it and it's like, bing, it just like springs back, not a good sign. This is not the luxe look that we're going for. And I would also add that it might feel really coordinated, but it's, it's kind of given the same vibes as we saw on the matching bedroom set, which is it's coordinated because everything matches. And so it never feels particularly custom or luxurious or curated in any way. It doesn't really reflect you. It just looks like you went to 
what I mean, what even other home stores that are still around? I mean, home, home. What are we talking about? Linens and things? Is that is that gone? Bed Bath and Beyond? Are they still around? Anyway, I don't know. But let's say you just went to Bed Bath and Beyond, and you just grabbed that big old bed in a bag and took it home, and it's not reading like custom and luxurious. Again, if you love it, go for it. But I don't. I would say that choose pieces. You spend a third of your life in your bed. Can we just also just say that? Like you spend a lot of time in your bed. Don't cheap out on a bedroom set. I get it. It was 45 or $65 or something for an entire bed set. Who could turn down such a deal? I could because I think there are places that you can get beautiful fitted sheets and duvet covers and pillows and you can get a nice beautiful blanket that ties it all together. Like there's so many things that you can do that are not just going with the bed in the bag. So it's very teenage boy's room and I don't think that's the look that we're going for anymore. Unless you're a teenage boy, but according to my YouTube demographics, I have zero teenage boys that watches my channel. So you're probably not. So time for an upgrade, that's what I'm saying. So next up is gonna be that the scale is off. Now we talked about this with the size of the bed, but it also applies to things like nightstands and the benches or whatever you've got in the room. What I mean by that is that make sure that everything is appropriately sized to the room that you have. So if you're lucky enough to have a really, really large bedroom and it's super grand and beautiful and gorgeous, great. Then you can go and get some of the really gorgeous large night tape, nightstands if that's what you're looking for. Go for it. But if you have a smaller apartment size, sort of primary bedroom, or you have anything, then get appropriately sized furniture for the room that you're in. So these extra large, super huge nightstands with these big, massive table lamps, they're not really doing you any favors because it doesn't fit the size of the room. So I personally, I'm actually gonna go out on a limb here and say something that I don't know if everybody else necessarily agrees with, but that's fine, I'm used to doing that. You know, even if you can't fit a nightstand at all, although I think a nightstand is great because it is functional and it provides some symmetry in your space and whatever, I still think that going for something like a nice floating shelf can make a lot of sense, especially if you're in a really, really small bedroom. So like my first apartment was 500 square feet. My bedroom here is really, really small. And sometimes, you know, it just does not make sense for me to have of what is a typical nightstand. So instead going with something like a small stool or going with something like a floating shelf, it's gonna meet my functional needs while also being beautiful and gorgeous and all those wonderful things. It gives me an opportunity to have that extra furniture piece without necessarily getting something oversized for the room. So definitely understand the scale of the room that you're in and pick appropriately sized furniture. Usually I find that furniture pieces tend to be too big for the space. Okay, next up on my list is going to be choosing aggressive colors. Now notice I am not saying necessarily don't choose red, don't choose yellow, or don't choose, I, I see that all the time. And listen, I will say there's a couple of things happening here. There is like color psychology, which is that different colors tend to affect our mood differently. And I really do believe that. So, you know, blues and greens tend to be really calming and really relaxing colors and really active colors like red, yellow, orange, they tend to be really energizing and, you know, they're bright and they're passionate and whatever, but they're very active. And sometimes when you're looking at a bedroom, it it might make sense to go with sort of those more cooler tones like those blues and greens and whatever. I think that's fine advice. I, I understand why that is important and I think it's worth mentioning. So if you're really trying to think of what color you want to do, think of the mood that you're trying to create in your space and something like blue and green might make more sense for you as it does for a lot of people with what they're trying to achieve in their bedroom. But more important than that, in my opinion, is about color saturation. And that is because when you take a primary hue, so we're talking about like any color, blue, green, red, purple, it doesn't matter. Any color, when you add black to it, it becomes more of a darker shade. When you add white to it, it becomes a lighter tint. So when you add gray to it, you're really just taking that primary hue and you're sort of just desaturating it. And it's not gonna feel so bright and so in your face. And then from there, you can start to tone it down a little bit, maybe add a little bit more white, a little bit more black, playing with the things kind of in the color wheel, not because the color wheel is gospel necessarily and you just like need to stick to that specific color. In fact, it's good that you use a range of tints, tones, and shades um, of different colors perhaps in your bedroom. But really what I'm trying to get at is that playing with the colors that are a little bit more desaturated, a little bit more toned down is going to feel less aggressive than if you're going with sort of those primary hues. So if you do even choose a blue bedroom, which is again, a fine choice. You can do yellow, red, or whatever, it doesn't matter, but choosing 
you know, colors that are a little bit less aggressive, a little bit more desaturated, a little bit more toned down, or a little bit more closer, you know, that are playing with a little bit more of those neutrals in there is going to make a space that feels more calming and more relaxing, regardless of the color that you necessarily chose. So yes, color psychology matters. A yellow room is going to read different than a blue room. I think more important than that is going to be playing with those sort of more toned down, desaturated colors, providing a whole range of a color scheme when choosing for your bedroom. It's going to make a space feel, regardless again of the color you choose, it's going to feel a lot more relaxing and a little bit less intense than you're going to get from those primary hues. So choosing the color hue in its purest form, in my opinion, is a mistake because it just reads as too aggressive and too saturated and too in your face, regardless of the color. Okay, next up on my list is going to be too much furniture. So here's the thing. Here's what you need, okay? You need a bed. You need probably some drapes. You need a space to put all of your clothing, which if you're lucky enough to have, you know, a walk-in closet, fantastic. If you've got a, a small closet, that's fine. You need adequate space to put your clothing. So that might require another piece of furniture, like a dresser or something like that. And you need probably some sort of place to put some lighting. You know, if you have a table lamp or, you know, a place to put your glasses or a book or your iPhone or whatever you've got next to your bed, which as I said earlier, could be a nightstand if you have the room for it, could be a stool, could be a floating shelf, could be something for you to have there. Everything else is extra if you have the room, okay? So yes, a bench at the end of the bed, lovely. We love having seating at the end of the bed. You know, that's great. Like a, a bench is fine. It's a place for you to put clothing. It's a you know, place for you to get ready, whatever. A chair in the corner, a, a floor lamp next to that chair, lovely, right? These things are beautiful. Extra dressers, extra pieces, that's totally fine. But I think if you don't have the space for it, just stop with those basics, you know? Place next to your bed, we'll call it a nightstand, but again, it's got lots of options there. A bed, probably some drapes so that you can, you know, obviously control the natural light depending on the time of day, that's important. Also an opportunity to add texture, right? And then you've got uh, a space to make sure that you have adequate room to put your clothes. That's it, that's, that's all you need to do. Stick to those basics. You don't necessarily need to go further than that. If you wanna do a rug, it's another place to put texture, awesome. It's also very comfortable, especially if you have hardwood floors, great. If you have some extra room for some seating, awesome. If you wanna put a big lighting fixture up there, oh, another opportunity, amazing, fantastic, go for it. But stick to the basics and don't overcrowd your room. If you have a smaller space, stick to those ones that I said. You don't need to go crazy and go like, but where am I gonna put my my chair on the whatever? Like, if you don't have room for it, sorry, hon, you don't have room for it. You don't get the chair, okay? That's fine. Stick to the basics, add from there, if and if, only if you have the space. Okay, and then the next up is going to be not enough lighting. So you get the natural light that you kind of have. And as I said, I do think that drapes are a wonderful way for you to control natural lighting. That's great. But you're also probably, especially because you're in there at night, you know, or the morning, whenever, you are going to need a adequate amount of lighting. And so often people just stick to the light that's in the center of the room above your head. And that is most likely, I will say, not going to be adequate lighting for you to do everything that you need to do. So I would say, Pendants next to the bed, amazing. You have to run the electrical if you don't have them. So that can sometimes be a little bit intense if you don't want to put pendants above your nightstands or something. But I think it's a beautiful look because it gets the lighting right up there off of the nightstand, which I think is wonderful. And it gives you adequate lighting to be able to read and do the things that you need to do. So if you're doing a new build, consider putting in pendants. Sconces, kind of the same thing. Wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful. A little bit more work on an electrical front. You could do a floor lamp, but it might start to really compete with the uh, nightstand or whatever you've got sort of next to the bed. A table lamp is probably where most people are gonna end up with next to their bed, but so often I see people just completely ignore the lighting that they're gonna need, you know, for reading a book or whatever in the bedroom. So I would say you don't have enough lighting if you've just got that single lamp in the center of your ceiling. You will need more lighting than that, and I would really consider especially putting something near that nightstand. It's gonna make a big difference. You've got loads of options there. I'm gonna show a bunch of photos here for you, but I would definitely consider there. And also, while we're on the subject of the ceiling light, it is an opportunity to do something really cool. So often people forget that this light isn't a great opportunity to do something awesome and they just sort of stick with that plain old boob light in the center. And we've talked about the boob light, people. Change that out, do something cool. If you wanna do something textural, there's another opportunity to add some texture in there. See my previous point. Lots of really cool chandeliers and pendants and things that you can do, gorgeous light fixtures. Have fun with that one, but just don't forget about lighting. You need gorgeous lighting. And bonus, put them on dimmers. This is the bedroom of all places, right? 
having dimmers on those lights is going to make a huge difference to create that gorgeous, you know, right amount of light that you're going to need for your functional needs. And ideally, while I'm on the subject, I might as well also say if you can adjust the color temperature to match your circadian rhythm, I mean, extra. Of course it is. Like that would be amazing because you're going to want warmer, more flattering, gorgeous, warm light that mimics a sunset in the evening. And you're going to need to like brighter white light sort of in the morning to sort of energize yourself and get yourself started for the day. So color temperature, obviously that would be awesome. As well as adjusting those brightness is going to be huge as well for the lighting. More lighting, better lighting, please, please, please. Okay, next up is going to be not utilizing under bed storage. So for the feng shui people out there, right away I see you in the comments, you're gonna drag me for this one and I hear you. I get it. If you sort of subscribe to those principles and I have heard, I'm not an expert by any stretch, okay? So I am not here to necessarily, you know, share all the principles of Feng Shui. But my understanding is, is that a lot of people will tell you not to put anything under the bed, that it should have an open uh, environment underneath and, and I, don't know, I don't know the details, so I'll spare you. Look to someone else who is an expert on the subject. So a lot of people will say that it's not good to put stuff under your bed. I disagree because for me, I'm sorry, but I've lived in places that are 500 square feet to a oh, thousand square feet. I've never lived in a home that's bigger than that. So that is a lot of real estate that is underutilized if I'm not doing anything under there. I will shove a Christmas tree under there if I can. You know what I mean? Like I've got the Amazon storage boxes underneath there. You can get some at Ikea as well. I'm gonna link to some of the description on the Amazon ones that are really great. You've got some options under there. This is so much real estate. There is no way that I am not storing stuff under there. I've got so much junk that I need to put somewhere sometimes. I got clutter, you know, we all wanna hide the clutter. That's what, that's the name of the game. So hiding that clutter under the bed, hiding especially those seasonal things, those, you know, sweaters in the summer and the bathing suits in the winter, whatever, shove those under that bed because I'm sorry, feng shui experts, but that is, that's a lot of storage that I refuse to give up. So I would say don't sleep on under bed storage. There's great solutions out there that can fit perfectly with whatever bed you have to really maximize the storage. Definitely utilize that in my opinion. Okay, and now we gotta talk about it being too multi-purpose. Like, okay, so we all lived through the great panini, right? We all we all know what it's like to use our spaces multifunctionally. I hear you, I get it, we're all about that. If you have to do it because you work from home and it's a studio or it's a one bedroom and you just ran out of space and you have no other option, I get it. But I would still say, assuming that you have other options, the Peloton in the bedroom, the computer desk in the bedroom, the elliptical that is basically a place for you to put your dirty clothes because we all know that's what you're using it for. You're just throwing, you know, your jeans from yesterday over top of that elliptical because we all know that you're not using it. Listen, consider selling those pieces if you're not using them or maybe finding a different space for those items. Again, if you've got a two bedroom apartment and you have a roommate and you have no other option and you have to work from home and whatever, like we all made concessions during 2020 and 2000 to 2022, we all made concessions about what we needed to do to make our space really super multi-purpose. And if you still need to do that, fine. But if you don't have that option, I just know there's someone out there that's like, you know what? I maybe could sell that elliptical on Craigslist. Yes, you could. And I'm just saying that you can build a beautiful bedroom. You can design it gorgeously. You can take all the tips that I gave you. It can be textured. It can have beautiful lighting. It can be all your wants and needs. And you've got an elliptical that's in there. And it's just, I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's going to feel crowded. It's going to feel like it doesn't make sense because it doesn't, let's be honest. And it's going to feel cluttered and crowded and and not gorgeously beautiful. So if you have a way to get rid of some of those items, or maybe it's time to repurpose some of those items into other areas of the home where they make a little bit more sense, I would consider that if you can. That's all I'm saying. If you have to do it, fine. But if you don't, rethink it. Okay, so that's it for me for today, you guys. I'm gonna link here to my living room design mistakes because this is actually, I believe now, pretty much my most popular video I have ever done. People really love that video. So please click on that one because I think you'll really enjoy it. it. People still watch it to this day. It's crazy how much people love that video. So go click on that one. I will see you all in the next video. Again, link for the course is down in the description and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.